Matt, welcome to the Potential is Human podcast. It's really special to just have the time with you. And as I was just saying, I really just want to flow in discussion with somebody who has a lot of wisdom to offer. So thank you first and foremost for being here. How is everything on your side of the world? Yeah, it's good. Thanks. Thanks for that introduction. Um, yeah, I was just saying we was I was just speaking with Ryan before this. And um first of all, yeah, it's great on this side of the world. Um I'm just currently in London, as you can probably see. I'm in I'm in a in a flat in London. Um life's good, life's interesting. I'm really, I'm really finding um, especially YouTube. I've had with the channel a year now, and it's just it's softening now, this whole approach to YouTube and um, you know, realizing that the credit for all of this is we're all, we're all saying the same thing. We're all, we're all in a way in, in different messages. And it's, it's a lovely um, unfolding, um, you know, with, with its, with its intense um, deepenings at times, but it's, it's just unraveling and unraveling. So over here it's, yeah, it's all about intention at the moment for me, uh, intention and seeing what's important um, mm. with each corner that goes around um, more and more just gets seen uh, for what it is so it's yeah it's um it's 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 going well over here How, how's it going where you are in Johannesburg isn't it I'm actually in Cape Town Matt it's a beautiful part of the world have you ever been here no but I got a friend that that um that lives I believe near Johannesburg um so I'm mm. gonna may, maybe visit um in the near future but yeah about, I've always wanted to go to Cape Town because of the surfing <laughs> please come and visit yeah I think you'll love it and you'll surf a lot um, I used to live in Johannesburg at one point and then made the move to Cape Town and it really just is beautiful to live by the ocean. Yeah, no, I, I bet that. I, I, my mum lives near Bournemouth, which is um, right on the sea in England. And I know the rest of England isn't really renowned for its coastlines, but there, in Bournemouth, there's a beautiful stretch of beach, which is just like, I know this has gone away from non duality but it looks like... Um, just uh, like cape town or south south of france and there's something about those places when meditating with the ocean i think what the ocean does it reflects back to us the vastness uh it's not like the ocean's out there it's like wow i'm remembering my vastness through the projection of this ocean if this makes sense so it's like the greatest place to meditate is always i find wherever you are firstly but secondly if you get a choice do it in a space which is going to remind you of the limitless nature of of consciousness it's yeah it's all very poetic but it, it really does like resonate with me this this whole you know put yourself in a place where um you feel home you know yeah matt let's get hopefully to that vastness in our discussion and, and you know that's what we're ultimately pointing towards but i want to start with your your younger years and your journey that's unfolded you were somebody who was seeking truth right from the get-go right from a young age in terms of people who have this wisdom and understanding but I also know that that meant facing a lot of the suffering yeah what was that like like did you have a pleasant upbringing what was the experience of suffering in your particular context yeah no great it's a great question and, um as well just to bring it back very quickly to this credit I think you know I just want to make clear that that although it seems as though someone has wisdom and, and I know it's just language, it really is like the wisdom has you. And it's, there's almost like, it's, it's very much my weakness and the peoples that have these wisdom is, is, is their ability to be weak and just give up. That's really allowing the wisdom to come through. So let's make sure we're clear that, you know, there's no attainment here. There's no strength here. There's no human achievement. And I, I know, you know this, but just for anyone listening, like to put anyone on some kind of pedestal, um, it's more just like if I can be an inspiration just to let down your guard, even let down the strength. And then I think this is what people really can see in, in others. I see it in my teachers and stuff is just that vulnerability. So so, yeah, as a young age, there was just this real um, alienation from like it didn't feel right. Like, I have to be honest, the, I had a, I had a nice upbringing in terms of um, friends, school um when I was very young, as I hit like 11 years old, 12 years old, things got very contracted. Um, I think school picks up the pace of uh, alienation when we start to projecting out all of these different bodies and it doesn't feel right. This What you're getting programmed of what success means, what this means. Um, but in those early years, it's funny now that I reflect more on these early years, it was, it was actually a period of 
uh, intense love um, at times. I remember just like every night before bed, I would fill my heart up as much as I could with love <laughs> and like try and flood my heart with, it sounded really strange. I think I was trying to pray. I didn't, I was always taught to pray. I went to um, church a little bit with my mum. She's she's pretty religious. Um, in terms of not strictness, she just you know goes to church the odd time. And I felt this real connection with something greater than who I thought I was. And so every night I would return to that. And um, the praying that I was taught at church didn't really relate to how I actually felt, which was more of a, it wasn't a praying to someone. What felt more true was, just resting with God, like just keep realizing. And God is a loaded term. So we can just usually use the term like freedom, home, love, perfect love is a good word, phrase, um, and just resting in that. But then as I got into later years, that kind of get drilled out of you. And it was just this complete suffering, like this just of what I thought was suffering uh, as a human. It was just so uncomfortable to, to pretend that I was limited to this, the skin of this body, like to actually think that, I went down with the body when it died was a terrifying thought because for the first few years I had no idea I had a body like <laughs> I was just floating around like everyone was uh, and then we just get labeled uh, and we put ourselves really in, in a box like we don't want to play victim of you know the world's the fault the government's the fault we we decided to you know use the juice of the ego to feel small and um, I just got too carried away with it and it became too much suffering I, I needed a way through and a way out uh, and I found one uh, and it was right where I was. <laughs> was that suffering like, could you term it a depressive experience or, or so that somebody listening might be like, what What was Matt actually going through when he refers to suffering? Mm. Yeah, for any, everyone it manifests in different ways. And I would always say the same thing as I mentioned in a previous video of, you know, everyone's fighting really the same battle, but my battles came up as social anxiety not fitting into any social group you know being friends with these people a little bit being friends with those people a little bit but never finding anyone that truly saw truth like I did or mm. wanted truth like I did more than the world um and I think a lot of people still want the world which is nothing wrong with it but it doesn't relate to your own understanding that you know you want truth you want ultimate freedom which is everyone's desire but most people haven't refined it enough to to only want that mm. and that's what i really wanted and mm. i was so frustrated with jobs um substances uh relationships were never fulfilling completely fulfilling because i was always keeping them as an other i was keeping the world as apart from me and i was trying to move through a world that i was apparently separate from and it just didn't fit and didn't work yeah. It's incredible how that intensity builds, right? We we play such a separate role, or at least we think we do. And uh, I look at my own journey and Ryan was all about trying to create success, right? Following all the steps that need to be followed to get the best career and then do that job really well and make as much money as possible. You know exactly what I'm saying. And then on that journey, the intensity just builds until the point where it's like, I, I really can't take this anymore. There must be a different direction. I need to look in or try and find some sort of relief. Yeah, it's that chasing. Um, the, I think you might have used the word chasing, whatever it was building, whatever is going towards something. And I say the same phrase again, it's we think we're chasing happiness, but happiness is chasing us. And we're too busy mm -hmm. running for something in the future in this imaginary world um, that that seems to offer something greater than who we are so we put aside the remembrance because it's a memory really that we know that we're complete whole but we forget that just for a moment in order to have a a what if thought of what if i could be more what if i could have success fame or even just a loving relationship outside of myself they're all very socially acceptable things but society's sick like they're, they're sick insane thoughts of something out there and insanity sounds like a loaded aggressive term but really it just means you know it's not sane like this is this is an insane thought it's a thought that doesn't have any reality to it um and that's a very quiet desperation in people usually they don't see that but when you see it as clearly as this is insane you think well what's important because you know money is just digits on a screen of course it helps with stability and comfort but success what's success really like it's it's the, the goalposts are changing and we're all going for these just um it just doesn't work but mm. 
it's, it's beautiful to come across people like you and everyone on the path where we know that's not the case and we you know we we hone in on what is important and for those that follow it through uh if you if you want it more than anything you, you will get it that's all my message there's this big uh drive to you know give up all desires but you know have one desire and that's to see truth and to face it all that's all you need mm-hmm. like you know, be scared of striving for it yeah Matt, if we broke this discussion up almost into phases, right? So this first phase that we're speaking into right now is that I'm a separate limited human being called Ryan and Matt is a separate limited human being called Matt and so are all 8 billion others and I need to do whatever I need to do in order to make this life fruitful, successful, famous, call it what you want. Then there's a definite experience of suffering we now also i know that as actually that's grace but what initially turned you or what was that process of for you it was like did was it coming into contact with a teacher was it coming into contact with something as normal as meditation when did you start realizing that i'm not a separate self living in a separate me other world yeah 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 the the word limit limited is really important there because it's never that we're just unsatisfied with being ourselves, because who we are is truly free. It's, we're not satisfied with these fake limits that we put on our body, ourselves, who we are. Um, I always call it um, the fenceless prison because it's a prison that we stay in. But really, when we look, go looking for these boundaries of limitation, of separation between me and you, between me and the rest of the world, no one's ever found a fence to their field. Mm. No one's ever found a cage. They just see... You know, if you were to tell a horse uh, in the middle of a field and you were to kind of strap it to a pole, but then kind of take uh, take off the strap and let it stay there. But we've you've told the horse so many times that it's unsafe out there. You're limited. The edge of your field is a barrier. Don't go looking. This is all it is for people. They just haven't questioned how limited they really are. If there actually is any kind of sen- uh, um, separation between them and the world, like where... Where do you end and where does the world begin? No one's ever looked for that boundary in, in in normal mainstream life. And I think I think just like you said, going across a teacher that was like, hold on, this yearning you feel, have you ever looked for the edge of yourself? I yeah. was like, no. Have I ever looked for this separation that's that we're all going around pretending to believe in? And I couldn't find that. Um, and then from there, it was just going through the residual beliefs and sensations that told me otherwise until over and over again the pull to want to be separate kind of dwindled and then the love of truth just really goes a lot more stronger (laughs) i love that you still talk about the residue because you use the word integration in some of your videos and potential is human was one of you know this this podcast and when that first came to me, I now look at it and I'm, I'm so thankful because it means so much more, right? You you don't deny the fact that we have seen sometimes like I'm a non-physical entity, I'm limitless and nothing really matters. There's still the relative this and it's about fueling this with love, right? Or coming from that limitless through the relative experience of what we would label Ryan. And you've so many times pointed towards having the courage to still face the residue and the momentum which exists like i still have struggles at times and instead of running or having the aversion from those challenges it's actually choosing to what could we say turn towards or be with do you still experience momentum does does matt still sit with like okay this is an experience of suffering right now Let's put it like this. As long as you're having conscious experiencing, you're in prison. Like as long as you're having some kind of perception of separation, I think the fantasy is one day I'll keep the world as real and I'll be able to be so integrated and so uh, enlightened that I can just flow through this outside world with all my feelings just integrated. But like you say, there is this integration period. There needs to be this return over and over like I'm doing to this day no one's ever mastered this until they've you know just just seen absolute truth and there's no momentum left of anything uh this is when all the sensations has been transmuted over and over and there's just this prevailing love that 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 the love is of who you are is just so present you're abiding in that so long you just don't have to come back to earth to keep 
integrating this but like you say there is this period of time where people have this up and out like Adi Shanti says it's up and out and it's very I'm not the body I'm not all of these things but then there's a down and in Mm. to really go back to these integrated uh, attitudes of feeling allowing uh, you could even say coming back to the human for a bit and allowing the human Um, but ultimately the human is the cage Uh, the feeling of being a human this feeling of being separate is the problem um and so there was this up and out down and in and then this even after integration i say after integration i mean a kind of advanced integration of integrating more the illusion the the feeling of separation that's that's invested in the body this perceived body uh the substantiality we give to a world that still seems out there as long as it seems as a projected other this this is fading away so it's just it's just dwindling and dwindling and and the pull of ego just gets lesser and lesser yeah um, over yeah. time i once heard it described as a a spinning fan and it's like you you hit the switch but the fan still keeps spinning it was um aaron abke if you're familiar with aaron i haven't heard of him no um also wonderful call it teacher if that's the label we want to give him a uh, great great individual and that fan analogy you know if we can if we can accept that it's not like i hit the switch and the fan just comes to a grinding standstill it's like i'm still going to experience some of the momentum and the programming that's still there and it's about revisiting and allowing for that yeah no of course i mean even jesus um uh, or however however you want to believe it in a course of miracles i i truly believe what was said in that but he he was channeled through that and he pretty much wrote um what he, he wrote a course of miracles and in that he said you know this takes years this takes um a constant returning to over and over because there will be a temptation and the only temptation there ever is if you want to just it down to one temptation is the uh desire to identify as a body so mm-hmm. all you're really undoing is this constant want to be special to be separate to to be one above the rest of humanity and like just even if i'm an inch above them as my in what awakened self this is what this kind of gradual return is to home is, is even after awakening, there's so much residual specialness. Like, like I've, like I, I, when I started YouTube channel, there was that temptation, Like the YouTube channel was the greatest lesson for me to look into these desires that everyone has deep down. Cause we're all the same mind of wanting to be just a bit better. Like I'm Matt Garrett and I have a YouTube channel that I've been awake. And I'm not gonna lie. I do see it in others. And when you've seen it in yourself, it's very obvious in others and they will and they'll they'll come to see as i'm seeing at the same time that the true love the, the true home is even transmuting specialness of awakening um because yeah. that still keeps you separate to to the to the common person that you, that you'll keep projecting out there so um yeah what we really want to hammer home there is is that um i forgot the topic we're talking about but it was really that um that consistent intention to deepen um the understanding until it's yeah it's 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 yeah that's all mm. really mm. i think it's so incredible like when you even something like technology right youtube which is is part of the dream it's still going to teach us what we haven't yet seen and as you've just pointed out like i 100 percent can relate with what you're saying obviously having a youtube channel you know how can this make me more special or know something and i remember early in the journey that even came up in like techniques of spiritual pursuits so going and sitting in a 10-day silent meditation and then wanting to find something so there was still the eye looking for enlightenment or looking for an answer then leaving the perfect retreat conditions and trying to come back into normal chaos of world and then feeling one up like i just sat in a silent retreat for 10 days i may know something that somebody who hasn't doesn't know and when that hits you you start to see that even that spiritual identity needs to start falling away. Yeah, yeah we can exactly. hold on to it, right? And meditation, breath work, spirituality. It's just a protective mechanism, isn't it? Like, even when you've seen through self, even when you've had these glimpses and even strong glimpses that become, you know, you, it's very obvious that there's no self. I never knew the freedom in coming back to this and just allowing myself to be the same as everyone else mm-hmm. uh, as, as we are, because there is no difference. The the willingness to be one again, because it's such a funny paradox to say I'm awake 
to the fact that we are one, but only I know this and you don't. And it's like, that's just, it's, it's, it's just a funny paradox eventually. And I could see it in so many ways it manifested in, in me. It was even, even like my consumption choices, like recently refining, I was trying to like, you know, I'll, I'll eat better and I, I'll eat a lot better and I won't drink and I won't do that. All these strict things because that was a protective mechanism again. So if, if I can, you know, make myself healthy and there go with the identifying with the body again. If I can, uh, you know, be very pure, then I'll be more special than them. And I just thought like mm. one thing that this all comes down to is just a deep letting go, like a deep surrender um, of everything. And whether that shows up in these different ways, life is just constantly asking you like, do you want to let go of this? And usually we say no, but like you say, these, these chasings and stuff, they become so heavy and eventually it's just, you just choose the lightness of love rather than the heaviness of being going your own way with (laughs) yeah the lightness of love um i can only speak from my own experience and that that seeking was necessary it's almost like there's there's levels or there's a process right so did you find yourself also like leaning into the techniques like being a really good spiritual mat yeah yeah i it was storming the gates of heaven of like really trying everything perfecting every technique and Mm -hmm. it actually serves really well for people that have that drive it's just making sure the drive is inward uh in a gentle way rather than you know because if you're the other end of the spectrum where it's very much less about um driving and, and their problem is maybe procrastination and laziness and uh, an unwillingness to face um their inner world then yeah. you know i would say that's more of a problem um but if your drive is at least the fire is burning to find something uh, we just got to make sure the fire is burning and you know in, in the right direction and, and that direction is always coming home to the place you've never left which is complete whole perfect love with no sense of separation no sense of other you know the freedom that everyone knows and thinks is in the world is just exactly where you are you know yeah yeah that's a lot of the people who i get to work with in a more formal sense are people who are in business entrepreneurship what is your view on Again, this is the integration process. So what I see is as people come into a deeper understanding of their true nature, so I'm not just that separate self needing to create the most successful career in order to have the things I want. It's Then there's this incredible shift in they still do what they do through their unique skill set, but it's now being done from the likeness of love. It's like, what can I do in business in order to share this love rather than try and take whatever I can from the world. So perhaps what I can drop in here is like, what jobs have you had from the separate self sense and then even into the sharing of the lightness? Yeah, exactly. It's that realization that everything you thought from acquiring love and getting love from others and validation is really found in the, in the giving it's, 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 it's that cliche thing of what you, what you put out does come back because each of us have our own body mind set up in different ways with different skills, different ways. It's really one question is, is this serving the imaginary self or is this serving my view of myself as everything? Like, like it doesn't have to be as metaphysical as that as feeling like, Oh no, I'm making a film for you or I'm making a podcast for me. That's over there. It's, it's, it's always, is it coming from a place of love? Because it takes a lot of courage to go into yourself and find that place where you know you can't lose or gain because if you if you if you if you really see that you can't lose or gain anything suddenly your actions in the world are informed by that decision and i can always see a film or something when it's been made from an ego or it's been made from not caring and and i would say so yeah with me it's all very arty and filmy because that's just my background and my work so mm-hmm. for me that's just the body mind i was conditioned to have and that's how love expresses its way through me and my one question is you know, could I release this to the world without my name on it? And this inquiry in itself, and of course it's fine to put your name on it for reasons to, to promote things and stuff, but it really highlights and exposes any specialness I think that I'm going to get. What am I going to gain from this? You know, what am I going to 
um, get in terms of a self. And then when it, when these inquiries come up, I, I just say, live your life with your job. You know, no need to change with these jobs, but live it in a contemplation. Like, let's say you're a banker or you're a dentist or, or, or even just like a waitress or whatever. Look into what you think you're gaining as a self, whether it's a validation on your appearance, whether it's a validation on your monetary excess, success, whatever it is. It's just so showing. It's so telling every time you ask that question because everything gets highlighted of, no, I, I would, I need to put my name on the film because then I won't get the respect. So I won't get the love yeah. and the appreciation. So that's what I would recommend is a contemplation of these things. And it's going to be horrible when it comes up because you have to look in the mirror of everything that you're basically manipulating the outside perceived world to to see you as because we all feel unworthy at times we all see well the very nature of humanity is to feel unworthy to feel this ontological guilt this yeah. deep thing so it's going to feel like your whole it feels like you're dying is these jobs are our mechanisms for surviving and yeah that's just mm. i would just contemplate it all yeah that's extremely powerful and you know when you said that it's going to feel like you you're dying somebody hearing that can be like, Matt, I don't want to face that. Right. And it, it's all in perfect time. I guess it's not the dying and the dying you may think it is. It's dying to that, that identity, which is so rigid. And it's yeah. for me, it's a revisiting. It's like a small death and then a small death. And I'm like, this is still old parts of you that are doing their level best to stay in place. And as long as you keep trying to function through those identities or parts of the identity, you're going to have to re-meet them at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's death after death of everything you're not. And I think what's interesting is the a picture came to me there of like, you know, when you said, you know, people are going to be scared of that, you know, the word dying. And sure, that's so like obvious and, and so true that you said that because the word death is being programmed to be such a bad thing as if death even exists. Like, yeah. you know, when you really see that you're never born, you can see that you can never die. It's really like you're this big container for the body to come up and have a little life and go away and you're still there after each one but what it sounds like when someone says i'm scared of this what they're really scared of it i picture like a person in a prison that can't see the walls because there are none it goes on forever but they just want to sit still because they don't want to try and it's very it's a very good skill in a teacher to be able to um give someone the encouragement to gently look out until they start to walk then they start to run mm -hmm they start to realize there's nothing out there that's going to even harm them, even though everything's telling them that it is. That's the true um, role of a teacher is not to give you the content for your freedom. It's just to see that you're already free and to give you the encouragement to actually look for any kind of lack and limitation. Yeah. Uh, so with this death, it's, it's like you said, so you're looking for something uh, these parts of yourself are holding on and these parts of yourself they feels like a death when you're letting go because this is what this is what we've got inside of us like 50 fists 100 fists just clenching at different things job relationships money and when it's going like this some people are in this halfway stage of each attachment where it's like from the closed fist to that and it feels like you're dying and then you open out completely and you wonder what you're ever resisting because it feels so much better being completely surrendered and let and being let go um, but it does feel like a death, but you just got to encourage people to keep going with it. And, you know, don't, don't want people to play the victim either. We want, you know, to put the power back in their hands. There's, there's, yeah. there's nothing out that's going to kill you because <laughs> you can't die. <laughs> yeah. So well said, Matt, someone hearing this is probably like, they may be referring to not being a separate self and, you know, I wanting things in your languaging. I would love you to just give a pointer. What do you mean by there's no I, there's no separate self? Yeah, no, of course. So like the, the you could say the pinnacle of non joy understanding this, um, the the root of everything, uh, you could, I always, I always think of it as the tree of suffering with all these different branches of uh, the ways that we think we suffer, but you could trim these branches all day long with, you know, keeping the separate self, the eye intact, and um, just from the self trying to fix life, trying to keep the dream as real and make the dream better. But that's always going to grow back if you don't go to the root of the problem, which is going to keep springing back everything, which is the root is I am a separate self that exists separate to the rest of life, to the rest of this perceived world. Um, but if you actually even go into logically, like when did we suddenly just burst as a person, as a solid entity separate from the rest of life? At what point in your mother's womb 
did you declare yourself separate? Because when you were an egg, you were her, or you're in your father, then you're in her, then then there's this unfolding. And then is it when you cut the cord? Is this when you're a, a separate self, an I? But even then, okay, we'll, we'll put the logic to a side. It doesn't make sense, but, but still, we'll put the logic and we grow up. We seem to have this body that's separate from the rest of the life. But every single atom in your body is made up of the same. If you want to go into the science of it, which is still a concession, but just to see the logic of this, like the skin's shedding constantly, the hair's growing. You know, there's not a cell in your body that, that hasn't changed since you were born. So where is this solid self that everyone refers to? Can anyone find the eye? Oh, well, it's the body. Well, if you're looking at the body, then which side of, are you on? So then I would say to people, well, let's find where we think we are in the body, if there is this self. And so I've always thought we're behind the eyes because if I was to chop my arm off, I'd still be here. If I was to chop my body off, I'd still be up here. Right, so we're not in the body because the body's on the floor and I'm over here looking at it cut in half. <laughs> so I should be behind the eyes then, am I? So I went even further to the eyes. This is called self-inquiry, really. I, I think it was where am I rather than who am I? Um, this this was a lot more powerful for me. So so what to bring it back to the, the simplicity of this is we believe ourselves to be a separate I and me, but no one's ever found this self in the body, in experience, in thought. Everything you can think of is just a memory. The name, Matt Garrett, that's a label that can be taken off. I could change my name to Kevin, you know, the gender. I've been given, you know, a gender. People have changed their genders all the time, but I can see my gender, male. I can see if I wanted to change to female. I can see it all. So, so where is this subject in experience? So then we come to the subject and all of these objects and no one's ever found a subject in the whole universe. It's, it's just a thought. Um, but, but I say try it out for yourself because I can tell you that, but the whole point of inquiry is to find, it's what you don't find that's freeing. Um, it's what you don't find in experience and no one's ever found any kind of sense of lack, any kind of sense of separation when they actually look for it. So that's really what we're talking about with self-inquiry. Really. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. I watched one of your videos and it mentioned it was I think the Buddha and the gas pump. And uh, you you mentioned that you were once a, a delivery driver, I think it was. Mm. You know, it's like I'm personally very passionate about business. When it's done from it's I guess it's where it's done from, right? It's like it has such a, a tremendous possibility and potential to create this loving planet that we could all live on when business is done from that place of non-dual understanding or not from the sense of separation, when you were driving that delivery vehicle, was that Matt being the separate self, like just doing a job or were you in that phase now of actually understanding that there's something that's doing the driving or driving is happening through me? Hmm. Is the question kind of also linked to like whether sometimes I get the question like why a delivery driver what like is that not quite a rubbish job kind of kind of thing not that you're asking that but like is is this the kind of thing or is it more just it was the job a stepping like just so I can answer it in a way that we want to get into the the area you want to go sure in. sure was that a, a job being done by Matt as a separate individual or was that you meeting life because we still have to fulfill a function right and fulfilling the role as a delivery driver with the understanding that you're not a separate self, but you're doing a job to contribute. Yeah, I would I would say in this time, it was all about um, every, I would look at any opportunity I could get to extract hidden uh, resistances and repressions. And you know, being a delivery driver is perfect for that. Um, I, I'm quite selfish in my approach that I just want the maximal chance to uproot anything I can, which I've now softened and it's quite a gentle approach now. But back then, especially, it was good actually because the job, I, you know, I, I knew I was going to be a delivery driver for maybe a year or two just to, you know, between university and starting a career in filmmaking. Like now, now filmmaking, I see the same as you, that filmmaking is a tool to express and extend love and as a reflection of themselves, whoever's watching. So when someone comes into contact with your business, you know, if 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 the only intention of a business is to extend love and to be a reflection back to someone's true nature of who they truly are, then you it's not you doing the business eventually, it's God doing it through you. But we we tend to like for delivery driving, yeah, you know, you could say, oh, delivering food to people that couldn't go to the supermarket, that's really kind, loving. I didn't care. Like I, I'm sorry. I like I love these people. I, I love doing it for these people. But to love someone truly was never to keep them as a separate person helping them. 
true love was really seeing that they weren't there if that makes yeah. sense love was seeing through the otherness so i'm not into all of this like loving others in a compassionate way by keeping them as a separate individual like that's to me is a cop-out you know if you weren't it sounds strange but the, to truly love someone you got to see through their reality um, which in turn sees you as them it's mm -hmm. like a deeper step so i didn't really care in this in this part of life because what was coming up in these kind of delivery drivers was you know when someone was shouting at you this was when it was exciting for me because then i could look at all my defense mechanisms of protecting myself you know it wasn't just about love and peace it was you know when i got an order i used to go around corners and all the eggs would smash and like i'd go to the to the front door like like do you want them like <laughs> and I, I would go back to the shop and get some more like all the stresses of of life was really what i was looking for in these jobs so yeah i think you've got the jobs which extend love and the jobs that uproot everything that isn't love and in between that you know you've got jobs in between and eventually you'll find one which just wants to get yourself out of the way and express yeah. God, you know? I can only imagine how much uprooting was done as a delivery driver and just your willingness to meet that because it must have been a constant flow of frustration. And as you say, you know, somebody being unhappy with you and you facing that. Yeah, yeah. I used to have one guy that would like just sit there. He was like this old, pretty fat guy. And um, I just, I just, I just think he could be bothered to go to the shop. So I'd like turn up and like, I'd have to put the thing in the door and then I'd have his whiskey and I put his whiskey on his table. And like, I just remember thinking like, this is a perfect opportunity not to keep them as wrong. And look at, look at this alcoholic and, and this person, whatever is to really see that they were all projections of myself and anything that mm -hmm. I didn't like in someone else was always a, a turning way of who I was and trying to place it on them and that I'm better than it. We come back to it again. I'm better than them. I'm more awake than them. And I had to really grind down that desire to be separate. Um, and you can find that, especially in jobs where you have to help people that you think are less than you and that, that you think you're better than it's a perfect opportunity. Like I think people in healthcare, you know, there's that phrase, if you want to become enlightened, just become a policeman, like it, or a cop, whatever people say. So yeah it's it's a it's a cool attitude to have but you know these aren't jobs that are going to serve you like no one's ever found fulfillment in in a job per se but more using it as a messenger for mm -hmm. as a vessel for for that transformation right yeah. yeah exactly matt what is your take on purpose then you know often we can see in our modern world people wanting to find their purpose and that's very closely linked to the doing or the career how do you see that? Yeah, I think ultimately the illusion is that there's all these split purposes. Um, the people are going different ways. But when I when I, I can only speak for myself, there's a, I've only seen one purpose deep down is the purpose to return home. And whether that comes up in manifest and all these different ways that we think we're returning home is ultimately when you're when you're walking that final stretch, you're all walk whoever's walking with you, if there's someone in, in this kind of 2023 that's doing the same part of it you know you're walking in the same exact direction, which is just home, which funnily enough reveals itself to be, you're kind of walking on the spot because <laughs> you've never left um, that home. And so I'd say even when purpose seems to split into all these different ways, even when it's egoic purposes, really they're still trying to find home in drugs or they're trying to find home in egoic, going to the, you know, trying to build a big body or, big bank accounts that they think their home is there so there's only everyone's trying to find home that's the yeah. one purpose but some people have refined it enough to really see home and then reveal home and that's when it's like yeah not many people can can get can find that in this in this world yeah i found that on the journey I started pushing life away in that sense right so it's like okay i'm going to this process where i'm realizing more about who i really am then I'm going to now not take the responsibility I need to take. And if I meditated slightly longer, I would find more of what I'm looking for. But what I would encourage, and I'm hearing the same from you, is that throw yourself into the world, right? Fulfill your function, do the job the best you can from the best place in yourself that you can and allow that job, whatever it is, cleaner, delivery driver, accountant, engineer, to show you what you still need to see. It's not about escaping or going and sitting in the mountain. Yeah, no, I remember Angelo used to say, you know, Angelo Delulo. I don't know. Someone that I used to, and still do, watch his videos and talk to sometimes. 
um he he says the best practice is just a life well lived because they are the greatest extraction methods i mean the amount of resistances and emotions if you want to call them emotions and just deep beliefs are lying dormant and unconscious mm. on shit. like they're never going to get uprooted that's why people in these buddhist traditions that are very rigid or you've got these strictness to religion where you're not really facing life because you're starving yourself of of, of all those experiences you're starving yourself of freedom because the the freedom the key to freedom is within all of these deep dark emotions which are extracted from a for an outside world a perceived outside world so before you can see the world is unreal and you want to keep it as real at least go out into this apparent outside world and allow it to show you that it's not real through, you know, all these fear. If you don't go, it's like the monster under the bed. The monster under the bed is like the outside world that people run away from. Until you face the outside world and see that it, there's no monster under the bed, then you're fearless. Otherwise, most people keep the monster under the bed as real. And they stay above the bed in their little nice homes and just become, you know, they work out and they start to stop trading and stuff all for themselves to try and beat the monster under the bed. But if you can do those things, there's nothing wrong with stock trading. There's nothing wrong with gyms. But if you if you can do them from a place of love, after seeing through the 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 reality of of an external world, uh, and you've integrated that understanding until you know the, the, the dissolving deepens, then you're fearless. You know you got to go out into life and let it just like really mess you up and yeah. rattle parts of you that wants to stay 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 mm -hmm. safe. Mm. when i hear that word fearless for me it's like the fearlessness is known mm. through facing the very fears mm. yeah and that yeah. can that can seem so overwhelming at times but it's also so necessary like i, I don't think you can avoid it and I, in my own opinion i don't think there is another way you, you just gotta you gotta turn towards it and go at it yeah we we put those beliefs there we we, we said the world was like this as if what are, what are we really fearing? We're fearing, you know, you could say in a social situation, we're feeling we're fearing humiliation or shame. Mm -hmm. uh, in a life, if someone's scared of other things, just you're, it all comes down to the fear of death. Like you can you can look at every fear and kind of see, well, why wouldn't you want to be humiliated? Because then I'll be out from the pack. It's like a very animalistic thing. If I'm out from the pack, I'll get killed. You know, or if I'm if I'm, I haven't got a partner to mate with, it's all about reproduction. You know, it's it's just a mechanism in the mind, a reptilian brain of thinking that you know you need to survive. And when you this it comes back to death. Of the only way to be fearless is really to see through death, because if you see through death, you know who cares if you get humiliated? You don't die. Like, does this body die if I get humiliated? No. Even if this body was to die, I would I would watch it die. Like, where would I go? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go anywhere like you know, so that's real fearlessness to keep the body intact is fear to keep as in to think you're still the body is living from a terrifying thought of separation yeah yeah matt how are you supporting people on their journey i, I know you do one-on-ones um i know you guide meditation but what does that look like for you if people do want to get in touch with you or have access to more of what you're sharing yeah, well it's a funny topic actually you now because um as we spoke about shared purpose and you know over the last few months really kind of looking into what life's asking from me just just to get this makes sense huh? there's just been this real looking into whether i need a youtube channel um mm. like just, just for my own just called matt garrett and i think what spirit is kind of guiding me towards now is joining up with um kind of a shared channel with multiple people that that, that share this approach um you know namely there's one called non-dual devotion which i'm very um guided towards and have loved spending time with them and part of their team and stuff so i think you know i'll always be matt garrett on google but you know i think if people want to reach out for me i do one-on-ones but i think over time it will be towards a shared approach in a group called non-dual devotion with multiple teachers it's not about one person this is what feels so sticky and wrong sometimes like people put you on this pedestal or they or they think that you that that you know you're the uh, basically what i'm trying to say is it feels so much more true to myself and loving to be part of a, a collective that's now growing rather than be just matt garrett so yeah the website is still up there at the moment but that might come down the youtube channel will probably change its name um but just look out for matt garrett and you'll you'll find me and i offer one-on-ones and retreats monthly 
uh, at the moment, but that might change. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Uh, your gentleness in the way you just shared and expressed that, uh, I get it. Um, you know, at some point it's like you come out and then there's Matt Garrett and he's sharing what he's sharing. Um, some of the, the teachers that we've probably turned towards as well. And I think what happens if they didn't, right? What happens if they didn't be the personal brand, which they were, but at some point, I guess there's that deeper exploration around when does that perhaps need to fall away? When am I holding on to being Ryan Tayak and the brand and what I can create? And just to see you perhaps moving towards the more collective process, that makes sense to me and that it's a, it's a natural expansion with everyone else, even though they are us. Yeah, you no, know, exactly. This is why we can't demonize this self-branding because let's say Eckhart Tolle didn't do this or absolutely yeah you'd have billions of people that millions of people that didn't even like know this message and it the spirit will use the body as a tool um because if everyone to do this collective thing there'd all be these different uh practices no one would know any kind of mm. uh, structure and there's got to be that rigidity but for some people I think it's it's in their spirit to the spirit's telling them to stay as a brand and that's how they reach more people. Now, if I was to stay as that, I'd, uh, they can they can still go the full way as that. Um, but for me, I think it would be just easier to uproot the senses of specialness more, the, the real deep sense of, of being a, a self. Um, and this is what the, the YouTube channel was the greatest um, teacher of this because it's constantly given you opportunities. Like, let's say I used to have people make videos like, Matt Garrett is a scam and and all of these things and like it was or like he's like he's a he's a devil or something and I remember thinking like I can either get triggered by this or I can see myself in them as a scared perceived individual lashing out at something that they perceived as outside of them which was at me as an image in their mind so this became the YouTube channel was great for me just to start forgiving all of these projections of people attacking me or you know what's even more interesting is the amount of love and comments I get there's a tendency there to because every at the core of every ego they want to be worshipped they want this love so then I could then see oh it's actually easier to to unhook from the hate but it's stickier to to let go of the love because when they usually the love is quite a generic thing it's like but you can tell when someone is limiting all their love and putting it on your body like it's in like Matt Garrett not the, just the appearance but but thinking it's me <laughs> so this this is also interesting as well because then the identity can form around that let's say you have a childhood of feeling very unworthy to finally have a YouTube channel where people are trying to throw this love at you then here we have another hook. So this is this was interesting for me to unhook. And the freedom is if the freedom you thought you'd find in validation is always found in be, becoming completely nobody. Like not mm. not a bad nobody, but just you know the guy in the background that doesn't get anything. There's so much love in that because then you're at service of people. You're not taking from people. So with this shared collective and non-dual devotion, there's this real uh, intention. Andrew is a is a wonderful person person because he's opening up this door and i hope people that when i make that swap people come and watch more andrew and, and my stuff on andrew's table because we're real sim we're, we're symbolizing this kind of what's the word we're f we're at the forefront of getting rid of the specialness or seeing through the specialness and hopefully others will open to that like i see so many youtube channels i see myself in because they have an awakening and they they put their name up and meetings and it's great it's, it is beautiful but i can see that i had the same thing of wanting some kind of validation out of that and i would just urge people to just contemplate it don't resist it just just ask are you promoting a self-image a self-serving image or are you or doing something that serves the rest of a perceived out world which which is a lot more um efficient for your journey if you see that quicker you know mm -hmm. i'm really looking forward to seeing where this goes and i'm so glad you touched on it because obviously i could never assume that you were going to share that and it's going to be a beautiful thing we know that so enjoy the ride yeah, for sure yeah i mean yeah they're out in america um so we'll see what happens. I think we're going to try and move out there. So that'd be cool. But, you know, everything chops and changes. Um, 
uh, all the time, but it's just this real intention. What they're doing over there is exactly what my heart is asking for and everyone there is, is great. So yeah, that's definitely um, something to look into. And I just, I just think there's this real emerging desire that people are having. It's almost, it's almost if the people that get to the end, even of not the end of teaching, but they see the limits of staying as a separate individual pretending to have answers when really we're just messengers for the spirit to come through. So what we get, we get arrogant in our, in our messaging and we pretend as if it's our message, which is interesting to me. Like even sometimes like click baiting titles or thumbnails, it's all very interesting how the, the ego, uh, like I remember using certain thumbnails just because I wanted more people to see that. But then I started to demonize that. And I thought, no, the spirit's doing this to get more people into non-duality, whether I take credit for it or not. It's not my responsibility. So mm. you end up forgiving yourself because it it was exactly what was required to get more people on the path. And then it's like, right, what's the next step is to take take a step back and dissolve back into being nobody again, I think. Matt, on that note, we've covered things at, at different depths. I would love it if you can guide us to just complete our time together in discussion with a guided meditation and perhaps help people to actually see and start yeah. feeling what we have been pointing towards throughout the discussion. Yeah, let's let's do one that instead of doing like an inquiry based, which is going like into a, a clinical kind of self inquiry, let's do a meditation that I do quite often because it's its intention is to first of all come to this place of stillness and just see our attempts with our agendas to get something out of the next moment. So yeah, if we, we've got about you know five, ten minutes, if we just kind of end this especially if you're at home, I think it'd be great to introduce you to what I tend to do at the start of each sitting, which is just to become aware of any agendas that we have on this moment. Because many of us, you know, we feel as though, you know, oh, I'm accepting the moment, I'm being present. But really, we don't have to worry about that. We can just allow ourselves to be agitated or to be happy or to be sad, whatever we want to label it as. And just to first of all, allow that to be. And I want to become more sensitive of any agendas we have on this moment. And by agendas, it could be, you know, I want to be closer to enlightenment. Or I want this person to perceive me in a certain way. I want a validation from another person. Or I want to control the situation in some way, some aspect of control. So we want to find anywhere that we're kind of with a closed fist and we're, we're, we're holding on, whether it's a bodily sensation, it could be a very visceral, physical thing. It could be a belief. I want to appear a certain way. I want to get something. What we're looking for is the place within us that can't lose or gain. There's a place within us that doesn't know of validation because it doesn't know of others. There's a place within us that doesn't need anything more because it sees it's never lost anything. Now, the body will usually be saying something different, even if we can logically see this. The body may have a resistance in it. The body may have certain emotions, certain places of agitation. Really, it can feel quite solid. And if we're to actually look into this a lot of us don't realize that we're subtly resisting the body the perceived sense of the body even if we think we're accepting it usually there's a subtle resistance so put the attention on this body and this can be done anywhere i really recommend on public transport or in the shower when you're eating when you're with friends when you're meditating whatever it is and just to allow whatever sensation is there to stay within you as if it was to stay for the rest of your life without leaving. And this is the greatest test of an agenda is, am I just feeling this in order for it to go? Or could I let this stay forever? Treat it like a guest at your dinner party and it's at the table. Because each of these sensations has a voice and they want to say something, but we keep pushing them away and telling them to leave. 
but really this this fear or this, these sensations i mean fear really is just resisted love all of these sensations are just positive what you were looking for in the positivity is actually found right at the heart of each negative emotion each negative feeling is holding the key to to that to the point where i remember i would just become so okay with something staying you always miss it when it leaves like if we go into each flavor for example grief it's actually quite lovely to feel grief fear it makes you feel alive when you really let it stay don't resist joy even happiness allow that to stay and in in this you may start to see there's a self that seems to spring up as if there's a self that is happy or a self that is sad but really these feelings are not feelings belonging to a self but the feelings of self what we're releasing is not emotions belonging to a separate individual but the feeling of separateness that hides in the body these emotions are just feeling like you're separate fear makes you feel as though the world is more real Grief makes it feel like there's a self with something to lose. But we come to this place of just being grounded in the body, noticing subtly the sensations, and gently releasing that resistance. What we're releasing really is the sense of self. The most simple practice is just to listen to the moment without an agenda. Even if it's not to do with the body, even if it's just beliefs or thoughts, can we turn up to the present moment without any agenda to change it? We can't even have an agenda to remove the agendas. We just have to turn up without a sword or a shield and really let go without a plan, without a map. You can take this into any workplace, any job, any family situation, a date or a friendship group. Just turn up without a plan. Let yourself get lost. Because no one's ever found truth with a map or a set of instructions. It's really at the depths of letting go of finding your way. So yeah, this was just like a, I think this is a great way just to start. Then you could go into inquiry. You could then go into, you know, whatever you're usually doing, but coming from a place of no agenda um, and releasing that resistance to the body really, because where we suffer is never in thought. It's thoughts are just mental images. It's the resistances in the body really where I find, you know, we're actually feeling that repression, feeling that resistance, you know. Matt, thank you so much. I truly appreciate you. And yeah, I wish you all the best on everything that is going to unfold. I'll definitely be in touch with you outside of these formal recordings. Beautiful. Yeah, can I just say, I think you're the best um, interview we've ever had because there's something about, you know, letting things breathe and the questions and your sincerity. I think it actually is very important to have someone that is deeply awake as well to have these conversations with because the direction... Um, everything about that is is just so appreciated on this end as well so yeah i really appreciate that and let's let's definitely chat more on instagram or when you've stopped having a coughing fit and we can um yeah it'd be great so i really appreciate you having me on <clears throat> i'm quietly choking <laughs> on the other side yeah with, with no agenda at all um <laughs> this has been fun matt so thank you again yeah all right see you later bye-bye